This is the plaintiff, Samuel Siafi. He says the defendant towed his pickup truck and he improperly hooked it up and damaged it. That's right, he improperly dragged it out of its spot. The louse refuses to take responsibility because he's a terrible businessman and he's here suing him for the $1,471.63 he's owed. This is the defendant, Rance Smith. He says the guy parked his truck in front of some lady's driveway. She called the cops and the tow was authorized. He flatbedded the plaintiff's truck. The guy came to retrieve it, inspected it, and drove off. Later that day, the plaintiff calls to complain he has two flat tires. And now that's his fault? He's accused of a terrible tow. All parties, please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Kiafi, tell me what happened. Hey, how you doing, Your Honor? So I was out in the in Long Beach one night, and I parked my car in front of my friend's house. Well, he told me it was his house, his dad's house, and accidentally. A part of my, the bed of my truck was blocking one of the, the neighbor's driveway. And he said she was on vacation, so it wouldn't be a problem. She yeah, saw it on the I don't know if I would take that as gospel. Yeah, no. uh, Because it turns out that that wasn't the case, yeah. right? Yeah, she saw it on the ring camera and she- How do you know she saw it on the ring camera? Because that's what she told um, my friend. That she was on vacation, but, but she, she saw it on the ring camera yeah. and called. Yeah, she didn't know that it was, I was uh, the friend, friend of. Friend, yeah. right. Yeah. So she probably is sick and tired of people blocking her driveway. <laughs> yeah. All right, so she actually told your friend, oh, I'm really sorry, but, you know, I saw it on the ring camera. And, okay. Yeah. All right, so go on. Yeah. So, and then, so I showed up the next day, and my car was gone, so I was trying to track it down, and um, found out it was at a Blessed, it got towed by Blessed Towing, and they were closed on Sunday, so I went over the next day on Monday, and then I showed up, and I got in the car, started driving it, it was fine, and then I took a right, and I heard like a grinding noise. So I pulled over, got out, and saw it, and the two tires on the passenger side were flat. And then the whole was Were they flat when you picked up the car? Um, so I got on the driver's side, and I just pulled out, and then... Right, right but, but like I've driven on flat tires, I know how it feels. Have you ever driven on a flat tire? Do you know how it feels? Well, you yeah. eventually knew how it felt. So yeah. were they flat when you first drove off? Yeah, yeah. Then how could you keep driving? How long, how far did you drive? Like, less than a block. Like, about a block. How, when did you call them and say something? Uh, about an hour after. So what'd you do between a block, which takes 10 seconds, you didn't walk back and say, hey, my car is down the block. Yeah, it was just a lot. So when I got there, uh, the guy opened the lot. Uh, not him, I guess his employee, opened the lot, gave me the keys, I got in and drove, and then he drove off, and then he locked the gate, drove off, and then I started driving. And then there was another um, mechanic shop, Pumas, who saw me outside with the, with the flat tires, and then they offered to help me. So what did they do? Um, so they filled it as much as they could. They put the car in like this little, like, um, like little truck thing. It wasn't like a pickup, um, like a tow truck, but like this little, um, like forklift and drove it a little bit more up the block to their uh, shop. And did, what did they do? They just filled it as much as they could and they saw that the air was coming out of the side of the tire so they said it must have been the way it was clamped and then um, they filled it with enough air that I was able to get to Mavis tire which was like another two blocks away and then I got new tires. And you bought new tires. So you're yeah. suing them for the two new tires that you, mm -hmm. that you uh, paid for. Uh, what's $255, the cost to, of labor to put the tires on? Um, no, so that was, when I was driving it after, there was like a rattling underneath the car. What, what year car is this? Uh, 2014. What is it? A Toyota Tacoma. Okay, go on. Yeah, so I heard like a rattling underneath, and then I brought it to uh, a mechanic nearby, and he looked underneath, he lifted it, and said that like there's um, plates under, like heat plates that keep um, the car cool. He said those like came undone like the the nail the screws came out okay and what evidence did you do you have that the toe did any of this because you said something about oh they must have clamped the tire the wrong way I'm not even sure what you're talking about because I don't think they drag them by the tires but but who told you that phrase and is that in writing anywhere 
Um, no, I don't have it in writing from Pumas, but the video that I have, it shows that the air coming out of the side of the tire, so the way, like, I couldn't have drove over something because that wouldn't have put, you know, holes in the sides of the tires. How old are the tires? Um, about six months old. Do you have a receipt for them showing they're six months old? No, I don't. Let me hear from you, Mr. Smith. How you doing, Josh? Um, my driver was the one who released the car. When you get your car released, you have to sign a document stating that your car is intact. Do you have that document? Everything. No, but he signed it. He should have yeah, well, it released for him. No. What do you think you have the guy sign it for? No. What do you think right. is the purpose of signing it? Correct. It's to be able to show that he agreed that everything was fine. Correct. So what do you do with the paper afterwards? Use it as a doily for your beer? I mean, where is the paper if it's not in your possession? He pulled away from the yard, uh, and he said that it was the passenger side, which it was the driver's side, two tires, because he sent me a video right after it that when it was at Pumas that they picked it up on some truck or forklift, as he say. It Do was you have that video? Side. No, he just sent, no, I don't have the video. Do you have that video? Yeah. Can I see that? Did you submit it? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it's the passenger side. Had you told him it was the two front tires? No, it was the Well, then if, the, if it's a two passenger side tires, how would it have anything to do with your theory of how they towed it by the two front tires? No, the way they clamped it onto the uh, flat But they don't bed. clamp, where do you think that they clamp four tires? You know, if it's the back tire, according to you, there's a bunch of construction going on around there? At the time it was, they was just repaving the road because they just took all the blacktop off of the road. And if you drive out of my yard, which is a 17,000 square, square yard, you pull out, you'll know if you got two flat tires, two. Well, anybody would know, I think, if they got two flat tires. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and they was on the same side. It was a front and a back tire. Okay. And I, you don't even hook up to the tires. I'm a, I'm a tow truck company. You hook up to the clamps that's under the car. It's clamps that the hooks go into, which is one on the left side front and the right side front. And then you got two on the back, which is on the subframe of the car. And then what? That's it. It's only four chains that go on it. Don't right, nothing but, go and on then, the tires. How, how was this tow conducted? What kind of tow was uh, it? A flatbed tow, which is, which is I disconnect the linkage so the car will roll freely anyway. So he's showing that the bubbling is on the side of the tire. How does one get that? You're as good as mine. As yeah, we, I don't know. We, I've had that. That's we, why I'm kind of wondering. We, how did I get that? Um, we drag the, the car goes straight up, which it goes on four skates. Skates go under the two front tires, skates go under the two back tires. As the car's going up, it's rolling freely anyway because we disconnect the linkage to push it back up the, up the truck. What do you mean it's rolling freely? Tell me how you tow. Uh, basically, the car was in front of a driveway, and he said it's a little bit, it was blocking oh, no, the driveway. I know why drive. you towed. It he was, knows it was, why it was, you towed. It was, it was what I mean the is physically how this tow. It's, do you have the paperwork from this tow? No. Why not? I didn't bring anything. Why don't I you bring anything? Sorry. Have you ever watched me? Yes. Well, you knew I was going to say something about the fact that you didn't yeah. bring any paperwork. That's... Do you have the paperwork from the tow? Um, no, I didn't get any paperwork from them. I just have. Even the... after you picked up? No. Because there's saw, something you, you signed. Don't talk to him direct. Boy, you got all <laughs> kinds of demands for a guy who came <laughs> with his empty pockets to court. Okay. Do you uh, do you have any of the paperwork from the day? Because they do. They always make you sign something. Yeah, so. I didn't sign anything. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you did. But I'm truly trying to understand. And neither one of you giving me paperwork about the tow is just. It's fascinating to me. Uh, how this tow, because there's other, do you only flat bed or do you also do the other type of tow? Yeah, we do wheel. So what's tow. the other type of tow? Tell me about that. The only type of tow you'd have had to do with that, you'd have had to use dollies, which it hooks up to the, it's, it's, it's called a self-loader, which you hook, pick up the front and you put dollies on the back. But we didn't go with that truck. We basically went with the how flat How do I know? Bed. Why no. don't you show me the, the, the paperwork and then I'll know, right? <laughs> True. Right. Well, how do you come in here empty-handed without the, the... Uh, actually rushing out this morning. And rushing out it, this morning? Yeah. Do, did someone call you this morning and say, hey, how would you like to be on people's court? No. No, right? Okay, so there's no reason to rush out this morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the other type of tow, the dolly tow you were just talking about. How does that work? Uh, you pick the front of the car up, and then you put How do you pick the front of the car? It comes with, it's like forks that go under it. Right. And it goes around the tires, and then right. you pick it up. Right. And then you put dollies on the back, and then it just rolls freely. So it rolls free. It yes. rolls on the dot. When you say rolls freely, the car's not rolling. The car it's, is able to yes. motor 
because yes. you've the, got it on a dolly. Yes, yes, I have it on dollies that go in the back. And okay. The and uh, when those bars go up, uh, they go up around the tire. They lift it from the tire. Yes, correct. But they lift the two front tires. Correct. Not the two back tires. No. And what he had holes on were the two left tires. Correct. So you have a video of one of the tires. I can't tell which of the tires it is from the video, obviously. Where's the video of the other tire? Because you said you received video showing it was the two side tire, the two passenger yeah, he, side tire. He, he showed me. Was, it, was that on a video that he showed? Do, do you have other videos besides yeah. this one? He yeah. sent me a picture. Yeah, let me see them from your phone a second. And that's after we try to fill it. Do you have a bubble video of the other tire or no? No. No. Why not? Uh, was that one not on the side? That one was on the bottom? No. I, yeah, I don't know why I just took the one. This was the one I had the video, video of the bubble. So here we are in court. You're suing for $1,500. You're suing the tow company. You want $500 for your inconvenience. $255, which was the labor to put on the tires, $416 for new tires, and you want the tow fee of $300 given back to you. Yeah. Can you explain why you are here suing for $1,500? Yeah, so the fee for the tow, I mean, you know, if I got my car towed and I have to pay, that's one thing, but, you know, if you, you go to pick up your car and it's damaged or something's wrong with it, you know, I don't see why I have to pay you $300 because, you know, the service you provided, even if it was just towing my car. Okay. And then the $500, I, um, I wasn't driving my car for a couple of days because of that rattling sound, and I just um, couldn't, couldn't go to work. And What was the day of the tow? A Saturday. Do you remember the day of the tow? Yeah, it was a Saturday. Why don't we just look at the paperwork? Yeah, yeah. It was a What was the day of the tow, gentlemen? Nobody knows? I think it was August 24th. Oh, you still don't know. How about you? Uh -huh. You know? No. Yeah, you can figure it out, Judge. Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. The plaintiff says the defendant is a horrible businessman who will not own up to his responsibilities and pay for the damage to his car. But the defendant says the guy got two flat tires after he was driving it around, and now that's his fault? Let's go back into the courtroom. So I know that he has uh, the Mavis receipt for the tires on August 22nd. I know... I haven't. Are we, are we talking about this year? Yeah. August 22 was a Monday, not a Saturday mm -hmm. this year. Yeah, but they were closed on Sunday. Oh, okay. So you would have picked it up on a Monday? Does that make sense that you're closed on Sunday? Mr. Smith, join me. No, I'm open every day, but I, ha I've, I just found the, 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 the pictures right here. Can I see your phone? Are you guys open on the Sunday? I'm open every day. And yet you're blessed towing. Yes. Okay, so the pictures were sent on the 22nd of August. Did you actually do the tow, or are you the owner? I'm the owner, but my, it was me, and my, I went with my driver. Okay. But the way the, way the car, it's, it was a corner house, and it was just so simple. You pull the flatbed forward, you back right to it, so you don't drag the car, you disconnect the linkage under it. How do you disconnect but, the linkage under it? It's a, it's, it's a button that you just pull down, and it pops forward, and the car rolls freely. When you get the car back, you put the clip right back in the same place, and it's just, it's, it's just like it's, nothing never happened. See, I don't know if they damaged your car, and the problem with that is that you're the guy with the burden of proof when you come to court as the plaintiff, so you're the one who's going to have to prove to me that they damaged your car. You know, I hear what you're saying. Oh, Judge, I only drove a few blocks. I mean, it had to have been them, but it could have been something else. Um, you know, it might not have been them. And I've got you, although he doesn't have the paperwork here that you signed, I know how the, uh, all these places work. And plus, you left the property. So I'm sure you looked at it before you left. If you saw two, you're not going to drive on two busted tires. So it makes it harder for you to prove your case, but not impossible. If you had something from your mechanics that said it's the tow that did it and this is how the tow did it, but you, neither one of your mechanics say anything about, about mm -hmm. that. It makes it very, very difficult for you to recover against them after you've driven off the property, especially, and driven a few blocks in an area where there's construction. I don't know how your tires got busted. Um, I know nobody's ever happy when they're towed. Uh, and I don't know how your tires got busted, but that's the problem for you. 
for you to win this case, I have to find that it is more likely than not something they did. So you got to give me something that that links it to them. You're telling me, oh, they told me it's the way, you know, no, that's kind of here. You know, you got to be able to prove up your case by something from the mechanic who says, I've seen this before. This is how, you know, whatever, something that yeah. that pins it on them. Yeah. So, like, even if it wasn't the way they clamped it, because I, I wasn't there, I don't have proof with the way. But if even if it's in their lot and it's locked in their lot, and just the way they put it down damaged Maybe, the tires. if that's how it happened. But here's the problem. I'm going to tell you the sum total of your evidence against them. Your evidence is this. A piece of paper that shows what you paid mm -hmm. for the tires, which, of course, you're going to give me that. I yeah. But it doesn't say anything about the damage to the tires. And this fellow, which is on the 29th, saying full diagnostic. And the 29th is a week later. Mm -hmm. Full diagnostic, remove and replace damage covers in bottom of the car. What the heck's that? That's like something my mother and I would say. Like, what's that? Doesn't sound like a, uh, a full diagnostic of the car. Use some car terminology when you're. What did he say this was? Covers on the bottom. What did he say that was? Yeah, he said it was the hot, the heat plates underneath that came loose from. I guess the way they they brought it up was rough and it. Is it, or is it maybe that you hit something and that needed to be replaced? Remove and replace damage covers. I don't know, see? Yeah. But the fact that I don't know does not inure to your benefit. It inures to his benefit. Mm. So my verdict in this case is for the defendant. So let's talk to the plaintiff, Mr. Siafi, see how he has responded to the judge's verdict. What do you think, Mr. Siafi? Yeah, I don't think the judge uh, chose the right verdict. Yeah, the, the, other, <laughs> guy, <laughs> the other guy showed up. You had no paper. evidence for her. You, you didn't give her anything to prove your point. Don't you understand that? Yeah, but if you have receipts the same day of, of the tow you picked it up and the tires are flat minutes after you got out of the, from picking up your towed car and the tires are flat, it kind of, you know, does that not make sense? I'm sorry for you, but that's a judge's decision. You, you brought no evidence to court and that kind of, you're sunk. I'm sorry, okay? Better luck next time. All right, now let's see what the defendant, Mr. Smith, has to say. He didn't bring any evidence into the courtroom either. Mr. Smith, you're lucky. <laughs> Don't you think so? Yes, because if you yeah. had two flat tires, you would have known upon driving right out of the yard that you had two flat tires. You wouldn't have known blocks away. So were you surprised to get sued by him? Yes. Have you ever been sued before? No, sir. All right. Well, listen, at least you said you've watched, you've watched the people's court. You know people bring evidence into the courtroom with them. You've learned something from this case, then, I presume, right? I'll be better off next time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope there's not a next time for you, all right? Good luck to you. All right. Thank you. All right. Harvey, what do you think? Doug, look, I mean, this is a case where the plaintiff should have brought in a mechanic. This is beyond his capacity to understand exactly what happened here. A mechanic is necessary because a mechanic is an expert. The judge is not a mechanic, so the judge can't take that kind of a leap. Uh, plaintiff didn't bring the mechanic in. That's why the plaintiff lost. Do you wait until your gas tank is almost empty before you fill up? Have you ever run out of gas? <laughs> I'm one of those guys who believes that the E stands for enough <laughs> on, on the gas tank, and I am guilty of driving it down to like fumes, but I never run out of gas. No. Never. I run out of gas. You do. With Every now regularity. And then. Yeah, yeah. With an alarming, it's been a while, but an alarming regularity. Yeah. It's probably been three or four years, but you've it's done been it. more than that. Maybe but, more. Right. but there was a time when I ran out of gas twice in two weeks. Right. Right. Um, I bailed you out probably. You've both bailed times. me out. My dad's bailed me. It's like yeah. it shouldn't happen. It's, I probably run out of gas four times in my life. Well, you know, now a, a lot of cars. But twice in two weeks was really bad. Right. A lot of cars now have that, that range computer on it where you can, you can get it to tell you how many miles to it. Yeah, but the range tank. computer doesn't work on you because the range computer is like when I tell you be ready at seven and you just right. assume I'm lying. Right. And so you assume the range computer's lying. Well, you know, I assume there's more. And I, I, the worst is about uh, three or four months ago, I was driving from our house in North Carolina down to Charlotte Airport with my brother. And he's driving a rental car. And we leave the house. Oh. And I said, you're going to have to fill the tank. It says that your range is 90 miles on your dashboard. And he said, yeah, how far is the trip? I said, 110. 
He goes, ah, I think I can make up a little bit of that on the highway. It'll drop down, and those numbers will get closer together. He refused to stop And I go, well, gas. why won't you stop? And he right, said, because I paid for the full tank he prepaid at Hertz for the or Avis, <laughs> wherever he rented it, so he could get a discount. Right? You got like, I don't know, 10 cents a gallon last year. He goes, I'm going to run it on, down, down to nothing. I said, you're nuts. So you, you can't play around like this. He goes, ah, don't worry about it. So we're a few miles from the airport, and it drops from five miles to like four miles and then I said, Joel, we're getting a little too close. Don't you think maybe you should get gas? He goes, well, no, because when it says five miles, that's really 5.99 miles. Jeez. Because it just dropped down from the six. We got to the airport, and the thing was sputtering going up the ramp to the rental car drop-off at Charlotte Airport. And it made it to the spot. And my brother gets out, and the key leaves the key in there and says to the guy, you might want to put a little gas in it. Kind of <laughs> Never seen anything like it. That car was running on fumes only. It had said zero miles for like oh, he got uh, his three or four worth. miles away from the airport. Yeah. <laughs>